Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. If you like the content you see here, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new upcoming videos. With that being said, let's get on to the video. Do you ever wonder if your tech is spying on you? With the advent of the Google Home, the Alexa, you know, your phone's having the ability to do all sorts of voice searches and voice things and connect your home in a million different ways that it had never been able to do before. There's got to be something going on. These devices have to be listening for their keywords all the time. You may remember an article published in 2017 by tech journalist Artem Rusakowski. I hope I pronounced that right, uh, who received a Google Home Mini as a review demo. Now, he found out that that particular Google Home Mini was recording not only just what he asked it, but literally every piece of every conversation he had, and it was uploading it to the Google's cloud. Now, once Google found out about this, they obviously patched the device and fixed the issue. To read Arden's article about this in Android World, please check out the description as I've provided links to that, among other things that we'll be discussing today. I decided to look into these issues of privacy a little bit closer. Um, I currently own a Google Home Mini, as well as an Echo Dot. I decided to look into this further. I started with Google. I went to Google support page for its Nest line of products, which includes the Home Mini. Uh, their privacy statement reads, the Google Assistant is designed to wait in standby mode until it is activated, like when you say, hey Google. The Assistant starts in standby mode, waiting to be activated. In standby mode, it processes short snippets of audio, a few seconds, to detect an activation such as, OK Google. When an activation is detected, the assistant comes out of standby to fulfill your request. And the FAQ goes on to say, occasionally the assistant will activate when you didn't intend to, because it incorrectly detected that you wanted its help, like by a noise that sounds like OK Google. If that happens, just say, OK Google, that wasn't for you and the assistant will delete the last thing it said. This is interesting because if you don't specifically tell the Google Home Mini to delete what you just said, then it will record your voice and store it. If you want to learn how to manage these audio recordings, I've also provided a link down below in the description. If you want to go a step further and delete your entire profile, it's a lot more complicated than just deleting the Google Home app from your phone or unplugging the Google Home Mini. Again, Google's FAQ. You can always choose to delete your home in the Google Home app or your Google account at account.google.com. But if you only uninstall Google Home app, it will not delete your account or home information. I've also put a link into the description for that. The same is true with Alexa. According to the New York Times article in the description below, the Alexa, just like the Google Home Mini, is always listening but listening for their wake word, which is Alexa computer, what have you. Again, this device is always recording and analyzing your voice data. I provided links down below for Amazon's policy as well. And you might be thinking, armed with all that information, would someone like me ever use such a product? And as we mentioned before, yes, I do. I only use the Google Home Mini for music. It sits in the living room on the counter and we have it connected to our TV and we stream music off of it. Um, I don't use it for anything else and I also monitor the recordings on a weekly basis. The Alexa that I have is currently sitting on a shelf somewhere and the only thing I ever used it for was turning on and turning off lights when I was trying to do a smart home but I've given up on that because it's in my opinion a little bit unnecessary. So what does this all mean for the average consumer? As users of modern technology, it's always a good idea to keep in mind that we are not just the customer, but we're also the product. Companies like Twitter and Facebook and Google and Amazon, they're all using the products that we use to get a better understanding of what we look at when we're online. And they then take that information and shape it and push different ads based off of our viewing and our content and our posts and our likes and our dislikes and they're doing that so that they can boost ad revenue and in turn sell us more products with that in mind be careful what you do make sure that if you're going to use products like this 
that you don't leave them in sensitive areas, that you check the voice recordings on a regular basis and delete what is unnecessary. And just be mindful that, again, we are the product and not the consumer. I highly suggest you check out the links below to look at some of your recordings. Look at what some of these devices have been picking up that you've said. And you might be surprised what it's heard. Once again, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. And if you like what you've seen here today, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can see all my new upcoming videos. And you might also like this video too. Thank you guys for coming by. Have a great day.